Now you can hear Military Matters Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard and Sundays at noon on Wreaths Across America Radio, available on the iHeartRadio TuneIn and Odyssey apps. This episode is brought to you by Homes for Our Troops, a nonprofit helping build and donate homes to injured post-9-11 veterans. Visit hfotusa.org for more information. And welcome to another Fast Take. I'm Rob Rodriguez. And I'm Jack Murphy. And uh, this week we're talking about an interview that I had a chance to do with uh, Jessica Kegu. And Jessica, I am so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name because when we introduced ourselves, it was just Jessica and Rod. Uh, but I think it's Kegu, K-E-G-U. I'm sure I'll get some hate mail later. And Jim Axelrod, uh, CBS News investigation into Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And I will tell you, I will tell you that I lived through this era. This is how old Jack and I are. Uh, we are <laughs> we are not these young millennials where it was like, oh, it's always been okay to be gay. Like, no, not always. Back in our day, uh, we lived through hate. It's not gay so, if you're underway. Yes, it, it was just full of hatred and and bigotry. Uh, this was just the way of life. This was. It's kind of like when Grandpa talks about uh, racism. You know, it's kind of like, well, it's just the way things were, you know, <laughs> they were over uh, here. Was. We were over there. <laughs> the way God intended. You're like, Grandpa, no, that's you can't <laughs> say that. Um, but, you know, it, it was definitely an era in the 90s, early 2000s. When I came in, it was 2000 and there was still don't ask, don't tell. And I, I, I was telling and I kind of touched on it during the interview with with uh, Jessica and Jim about. This incident that happened on our concern, and a concern is like a little uh, German military base where the Americans are still the occupying force. Um, it was our concern, and we were a tiny little uh, field artillery brigade in Bobenhausen, Bobenhausen. And we had a, a situation where, you know, it was don't ask, don't tell years. And uh, a lieutenant got wrapped up in a situation where he was being accused of of homosexual conduct. And I'll never forget the witch hunt that occurred right afterward. Suddenly, people were very interested in each other's sex life. Um, leaders are telling you, like, listen, you cannot ask each other whether or not the man to the left or right of you is, is gay. But if you see something talk to your leadership. And it was just, it was bizarre. It was, I mean, it was absolutely the weirdest situation to be in peacetime where you're just sitting there like, I don't care if this dude's gay or not. Why are we making this? A, why are we making a big deal out of this? But for some folks, it was a serious issue. So we're, we're, we're talking about this era where folks were thrown out and, you know, again, Jack, this is one of those things where it's like if you tell somebody today in today's army, did you know people used to get thrown out of the army for being gay? Yeah. They're like, what? What? First of all, dude, uh, I don't know what you're talking Like, no, they wouldn't see dude. I was still, you know, today's soldiers are far more professional than dude. Maybe. I don't know. But they would definitely look at you and be like, uh, that's weird. Like, why would they do that? Uh, but it's true. They would throw them out. And in, the, and in some of the cases that we talked with Jess and uh, – Jim, people got time. They served time at Leavenworth. That's wild. For for uh, sodomy charges and a couple of other things. But, but folks, we're talking about two consenting adults. We're not talking about a crime against somebody who is unwilling or unconsenting. This wasn't about rape. This was about two people who consent. And this was just during a time in the army's history where it was like, we don't like this. We don't want this. Uh, those folks got dishonorable discharges and now they're trying to, to fight to get those upgraded in a system that uh, doesn't always make it easy to understand how it works. Uh, Jack, you've had a lot of experience uh, in the army bureaucracy. You know how easy it is to get something as like your, your, your files updated or, uh pretty pretty simple right i mean i i mean 
it's there, there's quite a bit of information out there nowadays about you know people trying to overturn various types of you know bad conduct discharges a, a dishonorable is even worse because you know that actually like bars you from all sorts of government government positions and any other job that w- looks at you i mean a dishonorable discharge that you associate that with like some sort of like criminal behavior i mean think about that dishonorable like dude what did you like you know beat up one of your subordinates or like what like what did you do <laughs> you know did you commit yeah, an act yeah. of treason what is this and i believe it's a felony if you go to you're you're not going to leavenworth for misdemeanors you're you're a felon at that point you're a felon with a dishonorable discharge um it's it's <sighs> And here's the problem, Jack, and I, I, this is a question that Jess po- poised to me after the interview. And she said, Rod, you're pretty connected to the, the, to the, the service still as a reservist. What do they think about this? What do they think about uh, the LGBTQ members being in the ranks? Is there still controversy? Uh, what, what do people think? And in my unit, we have openly gay individuals. We have folks who are very proud of their identity. They're not pushing it on. It's not like I, I love the the notion of the gay agenda. The gay agenda, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody's handing out pamphlets and they're like, have you tried being gay? And like, no, it's that's not how this works. Um, these are folks that are just very secure in their identity. They know who they are and they're okay with it. Um, they're good with it, and they expect uh, you to be good with it in the same way that I would expect somebody to be good with my life. I don't expect Jack to be like, so, Rod, tell me about you, and uh, I plan to harshly judge you and criticize you. Uh, that's not how life works, folks. I have not seen any um, pushback, but I've heard of pushback. In the general army, I've heard of very divisive units, places where folks are taking hard stance politically, uh, religiously, um, and you saw it. I, and Jack, you tweeted about it, actually. Yusasak put up a pride picture <laughs> for June, and wow, wow. Read you the knew comments, that's going to get a reaction. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, did it ever. Uh, did you have a favorite comment in there that you was like, oh, this is, this is especially weird? I mean, my favorite comments are always the people who see that stuff and are like, that's it. We're going to lose a war with China. World War III is coming. We're going to lose it because of a gay flag, a pride flag or whatever. I'm like, really? Like, everything gets related to, like, whatever it is. Like, oh, like uh, soldiers getting paternity leave, female soldiers being able to have That's ponytails. It. We're going to lose World War III with China. We're going to, the Chinese are going to occupy America. Like, all this, like, crazy unhinged stuff. And it's just like, wow, really? Ponytails, like, pregnant women, and gays. Mellow it's drama. Over. Yeah. Lay down your arms. Pick up all is, all is lost. All, all is, is lost. lost. Um, but it does kind of go back to like the and this is something I did mention during interview was the politicization, uh, politicization, politicization, whatever, folks, the, the politics that have kind of been imposed on service members uh, and the, especially in the last 20 years. I think that political leaders have really kind of looked to the military to try and sway votes, sway. Uh, opinions, trying to get us on certain sides. Yeah, and that has been a very divisive experience in in uniform. I, I think one of the most interesting things about politics over the last ten to twenty years, I've never seen like a, a an actual piece really written about this. I'd be fascinated to see though, or or read one. Uh, is this big flip? I mean, back when when like you and I joined the army. The people who are like against the army and were kind of like taking cheap shots, well, sometimes legitimate criticisms, but sometimes really just cheap shots at the military were leftists. It was like Michael Moore, Code Pink, these sorts of like anti-war leftists, you know, and 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 people like that, you know, aging hippies who would um perpetuate this story that, you know, all soldiers are these like baby killers and war criminals and imperialist, you know, warmongers or whatever. Nowadays, we've seen this 
big shift happened where actually now it's the right wing that is taking cheap shots at the military, that they see the military as being, um, you know, soft and weak and filled with the LGBT community and, um, and critical race theory and all the, the, you know, that the libs and the Democrats and, you know, like you were saying, the gay agenda is taking over the military. Um, and so, I mean, maybe that's pushback because there, there has been a very um, persistent sort of like a- agenda. I mean, it's what it is, is there's a lot of people on the left who I think um, have wanted to see their own political values reflected in the military. And in some ways, I think those values are, are completely acceptable and understandable. Like we're talking about the, the um, you know, don't ask, don't tell and having gay people be able to serve openly. Um, you know, there, there's things like that, but I mean, I think that there's also, and I mean, we've talked about this in regards to like political correctness or wokeism in the ranks before. I think there are people out there who want to see the military be a reflection of their personal values. Um, you know, woke, both sides woke, if you, if you will, like whatever that term even means, I'm not even sure, but you know, these people are out there. and, And I mean, my, my point with that has always been, you know, the military is designed primarily to fight and win wars. And if you expect it to be um, the sort of banner or the poster child for, um, you know, open liberal values, you're kind of asking the military to be something that it can never, ever be. Um, But that doesn't mean that we can't do better on on certain issues and do better for um, soldiers on an individual level. You know, war is horrible and, and you know, authoritarian in, in such so many different ways. You know, there is a military chain of command, but it doesn't yeah. mean we can't, like, try to strive to do better for individual service members in the meantime, right? It, to me, it comes back to this elementary idea, this childish notion that if Jack has an idea, all of Jack's ideas are great. Yeah. And it's like, no, Jack can have one great idea. And several crappy ones. Most people um, base their careers around one or two good ideas only. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, so to me, I look at some, okay, so there are agendas. 100% there are agendas on both sides, left and right. Everybody wants you to live as a reflection of their ideals, of their ideas, morals, right. and ethics, and values. Right. Both sides do. Uh, the problem is that I can look to the left, and to your point, Jack, uh, if you think about it, racial justice, the the civil rights movement was a was very much a left uh, situation, a, a very left driven uh, cause, to the point where there were communists that were like, we believe in racial equality, and it's very easy to say, oh, see, racial equality is bad because communists are supporting it. <laughs> Hold on. I I can like one part of the message and disagree with the person who's delivering it. I believe in uh, fiscal conservatism, but the guy who is like, we need to be fiscally conservative, but also ban the gays from the military. Like, <laughs> slow your roll. I'm with you on the fiscal part. I'm not with you on the uh, ban the gays out of out of the military. You you, it's okay, America to like parts of things and not the rest. I can agree with somebody for one thing and disagree with the rest of it. This is where I think we start getting into this nonsense where it's like they want to base the entire premise of one part of an argument over everything that person represents and everything they've ever done. And I think that's just insane. The woke thing. We'll go woke, you go broke. Well, Folks, woke was an actual term used during the uh, Civil War era to talk about America being awoken, awaking to racial justice, to the fact that, hey, we're the last civilization that's still doing this thing called slavery, and America's waking up to the fact that it's freaking wrong. Now, when you explain it to folks like that, that that's the word woke. That's where it came from. You can go look up the 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 history of this word. That's where whole 
Hey, by the way, folks, go check out our woke episode on military matters. I did a great interview on that with a couple of in Britain. You know, uh, the uh, the racial classes. What was this called? Um, you just touched on it a second ago. I always forget the term. Well, you're talking about the critical race theory stuff. Critical race theory. We talked about that on this show, and how this was a thought experiment that somebody with an agenda took and was like, "See what they're teaching the kids," but it was never meant to be a class. It was literally a thought experiment at a graduate level college. This was supposed to be like people working for their doctorates to kind of have a, a, a mental game and kind of go over it and go like, well, where does this apply to me? How do I counter these arguments? So everybody has an agenda and they weaponize these words. Right. It gets so that way they can way push their pushing. agenda. Right. So if I use the term woke, to mean this, the original idea that you're waking up to injustices, somebody can use that to say, oh, you're a piece of crap. You believe that you want our Ameri you want America to fail. You want gays in the military. You want to just uh uh you want all the men to become women. And you're like, whoa, 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 that's not I, I think I think these terms have become so convoluted and people kind of use just sling them around in all sorts of haphazard sort of ways. I mean, when I hear people use it like, like a term like woke or critical race theory, I just assume they're just trying to get me upset about something that's not even real. Um, because when you do look into it, like you do like try to dig beneath the surface a little bit, like what's really there? What is the content that I'm supposed to be upset about? And it's really just, it's just sort of like a blanket banner sort of like term. You can just slap on anything in general. A lot of times it's not specific. It's just generalized <laughs> grievances. I, I agree that there is definitely weaponization of these terms and they are using it to, to rile people up. And this it will bring it back to the original topic of hand at that being the story. Don't ask, don't tell. And here's the frustrating part. If the military says we're going to set up a special board. that's going to go reexamine these uh, discharges. Mm -hmm they're going to get flack about you're doing some woke stuff. This is, this is, uh, you know, those, those people made a decision back in their nineties and two thousands. They knew they were doing wrong. So if they got caught at the time, well, they deserve to be caught. And that, that should not be changed because you committed a crime. That was a crime at the time, despite the fact that it's not a crime anymore. Yeah, again, man, it's really interesting that the way, you know, we as a society want the military to to like one for one reflect our own personal value system. And if it doesn't in some way become really aggrieved by that, you know, there, there's something like I think like total across DOD, there's something like a million service members. I mean, that's a lot of different people with a lot of different yeah. personal views. And, you know, as long as they come to work and they perform in an honorable way and do their job. Um, you know, the, the dogma of the state, I mean, we shouldn't have a state driven dogma or a democracy, but whatever that dogma or whatever those politics are in, in, in the other forms of government or, um, in other aspects of society really should not be intruding on the soldiers' personal lives. Um, it, it really just doesn't need to be there, right? There's no, there's no practical reason for it to be there. During the integration of the military with uh the different races uh there were there were several folks that that testified to congress and they told them straight out if you integrate this military you allow blacks and whites to work together this will be chaos the military <laughs> will be dissolved the discipline will destroy us and the commies will come and destroy us all uh give us an eight eight more years of segregation and then let's come back and talk about it uh there were several arguments that stated exactly what you said. Uh, the military is not a social experiment to be played with. We have segregation of the races. The blacks love it. The whites love it. But but, but segregation it. is a social experiment. Let's keep that in mind. <laughs> that is very it's much so, a human construct. Exactly, and, and it it is so it is so crazy for us nowadays to think like, are you insane? Like what? What the integration is going to destroy the fabric of the right. U.S. military? <laughs> Nobody's talking about that anymore, right? I think it's the same way with LGBTQ community. Um, we today, nowadays, 
there are boards that that do review dishonorable discharges for uh, African Americans and other races that were wrongfully discharged from the army with dishonorable discharges, trumped up charges, units that were blatantly racist towards them, and now they can get an upgrade and and you know return to the veteran fold with honor. I think we owe this to members of the LGBTQ community. I think it's still uh, uh, what was done to them, despite fine, grandpa, that's the way it was back in the 90s and the 80s, but it's wrong. We acknowledge it's wrong the same way we acknowledge segregation is wrong. But here's the thing, folks. It is 2023. We've been segregated. We've been integrated since what, 60s? I think the army was the first thing to integrate before society. Uh, I, I want to go. I want to say that that we actually did it before the rest of the country. Uh, yeah. I mean, the army seg- uh, desegregated in the 1950s, and right. then you know the repeal of like Jim Crow and all of that was like Civil Rights Act 1960. Oh, geez, I'm failing American history here. Ah, typical white male cis <laughs> white use. I knew that was coming. 1964. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going to say, but I didn't want to sound like an idiot when I got it wrong. <laughs> but. That's what I'm saying, folks. It's been, what, 70 years, 80 years that we've had uh, integrated. Am I doing the math right, Jack? Am I doing the math right, Sony? You're in, you're in the ballpark, Rod. I'm in the ballpark. To this day, to, the, to, to, to now, I have never been in a unit. I've never been handed a pamphlet that was like, have you considered trying other races? <laughs> no. I represent the Asian community. Have you considered dating Asians or black people or Mexicans? Like I've never received that briefing. I've never gotten that pamphlet. And I can tell you America, the department of defense. I don't think anyone's going to be handing out pamphlets anytime soon, promoting the agenda of, have you tried being gay this week? Yeah. I just I mean- don't I, see. I, I really I really think it's a it's a it's a political stratagem to throw this stuff for, for politicians and and sort of various social entrepreneurs, you know, you wokeism, CRT, whatever the thing is they're mad about today. Um and, and I and it's a thing with the retirees, the old crusty guys, they see the world changing and they're not happy about it. They don't like to see the world they grew up in and that they're comfortable in change. Um and then I hear, you know, within the within the military itself, which look, I'm getting old and crusty and gray myself, but um, within the military itself, to get a more most more accurate opinion, you should really have to talk to active duty service members. But I mean, I do hear some of the guys who are older saying, like, you know, a lot of the guys I know are getting getting out. You know, they're talking about early retirement um, because of all the wokeism and the woke policies and this and that. And I was like, "Can you introduce me to some of them?" Like, I would love to like write a piece about guys who are like throwing away their pension and getting out with eighteen years in because of woke policies. I would love to write that article. Like, I'm not being like facetious. I really would write that article because that would be an interesting movement if it was happening in the military. I have but not been introduced. Find- I've not been introduced no. to one of these people yet. It has not happened. Well, see, they, they, it's a misunderstanding when they say that they're getting out early because of the woke thing. It's because they're tired of waking up at 515 to make it to PT. Well, and, and their, their knees are blown out and their hips are blown out and their back is completely screwed. Yeah. And, yeah. There are a thousand other reasons to want to retire early. Then because of those dang gays, you know, like I don't think the that's, woke agenda, the woke agenda is keeping me up at night. Ah, I need out of this institution. I live in a prison of crazy. Like it's nah, like dude. they have more rights than we do. It's so ridiculous, <laughs> folks. If you want to have that story, if you honestly are really considering getting out early of the military service, Jack Rick in the email you. Uh, you can hit me up, uh, you know, on Proton Mail, uh, Jack Murphy reporter at protonmail.com. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm not like, I mean, I know oh. I'm being sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. So I, I for some reason, the audio cut out again. Uh, I asked, where can people uh, email you about their story if they want to get out early? Yeah, I, you can email me at Jack Murphy reporter at protonmail.com. And like, I know I'm, I'm making jokes and I'm being sarcastic here, but I mean, I am serious. Like if, if there are people who are retiring because of 
a real or perceived policy change in the military and they feel the military isn't being run appropriately um and, and they, or they or they have moral objection moral ethical objections to the way the military is being run and they're they're getting early retirements because of that um i really would write that story i mean that would be a very like fascinating phenomenon to to study and to write about and to your point Look, we are making some jokes. We are making some uh, being sarcastic about folks who I think take it too far. But there is the always the possibility that a unit is doing something a little too crazy, a little too much. Maybe they are. Maybe somebody in your chain of command is pushing their agenda. God knows it's happened before. I've been in a couple of units where the leadership had a certain lean, whether it was uh, – religious uh or personal their own ideas on the way the life works i don't want to get into it but they pushed that on the unit and it made life really really I, weird I, I went through it when they uh let women go to ranger school and there were all these like old crusty rangers who swore up and down they lowered standards for these women and i get it directly from the schoolhouse and my buddy's an ri and he said this I, i'd see it over and over and over again i'd contact these guys and say can i talk to them can you put me in touch with them i would love to interview these guys write about the standards being dropped and i really <laughs> believe me if standards were dropped i absolutely would write about that but every time Oh, he, he doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to jeopardize his career, put his pension on the line. And all. like, wait, so you feel they're so passionate about this subject. They're going to like rant about it to you anonymously. Like, what? This doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. No. Folks, if you, and, and listen, I know firsthand uh, how insane the military bureaucracy can be. Uh, trying to get something like trying to get your address changed can sometimes feel like an act of Congress, much less your dishonorable discharge being uh, upgraded. But listen, if you have a dishonorable discharge and you feel it was uh, it was wrongful uh, that you were targeted because you are a, a, a member of the LGBTQ community, fight it. Fight it don't take this sitting down there are pl there are lots of folks out there that are advocating for you jessica kegu jim axelrod there are numerous lawyers organizations uh uh foundations that are looking to help you get your upgrade and you know come out of the shadows of the dishonorable discharge one of the folks they were talking about was a marine who had never hung a picture of himself in uniform and 60 minutes was with him when he finally got his upgrade. He was, he had an honorable discharge and he finally felt comfortable sharing his military experience with his family and friends. That's important. Don't live with the shame, fight it. Be ready though. I'm not going to lie. Like you got to fight. You got to fight on your hands. Yeah. But it is, it is a winnable one. It is a winnable one. So with that said, uh, as always, you can reach Jack. Uh, he gave his proton mail. We'll put it in the show notes for everyone. And of course, um, we're going to, uh, you know, I, I don't I really want to go through all the ad breaks and all that stuff. So folks, uh, stick around, find out how we pay the bills. Uh, I'm Rod Rodriguez. That was Jack Murphy. And we will see you at the next episode. This episode was brought to you by Homes for Our Troops, a nonprofit helping build and donate homes to injured post 9 11 veterans. Visit hfotusa.org for more information. Now you can hear Military Matters Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard and Sundays at noon on Wreaths Across America Radio, available on the iHeartRadio TuneIn and Odyssey apps.